Hi everyone, my name is Monique, and today I have another solo playthrough for you. This time it is for a game called Stellarion that was designed by Shadi Torbay and published by Inpatience. And this is actually the newest installment in what's called the Oniverse series, or the Oniverse Universe, I suppose, which is a series of games that has the same very uh, similar art style, and they're typically for solo or up to two players only. The first of which was a game called Onirum, which I actually have over here. There's an app for this, and uh, I used to play the app a lot uh, when it first came out and it sort of has a reputation for being a pretty difficult solo game. As you can see, they have a very similar art style. There are several games now in the series and this is the newest one that came out in 2022. And so today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of this one specifically. I have all the games in the series and I'm sort of trying to determine whether I want to do playthroughs of them or just do a review video with all of them. But I sort of just decided to do a playthrough of this one because I'm waiting for Naveen to be ready to do our Uwe Rosenberg series wrap up, but uh, he has a full-time job and it's not as easy for him. So it at least gives me some time to do some solo gaming. And so in this game, we are going to be voyaging to different parts of the universe, all via cards. This is an entirely card-based system. Uh, the game comes with a few expansions, but for today, I'm just going to be playing the regular game as is. And so as usual, I am going to start with a teach of the game and then go straight into my solo playthrough and end with my thoughts. If you'd like to jump around, I'll include timestamps in the description below. Last but not least, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and would like to see more solo coverage in particular, feel free to leave me a comment down below with any more suggestions for solo games and uh, I'll see what I can do. With that, we are going to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, I'm all set up here for my solo game of Stellarium. Welcome to the Oniverse universe. <laughs> and so let's just start by giving you a quick tour of the Oniverse. Over here, we have the four different types of voyage cards, each belonging to one of the four different types of galaxies in the Oniverse. We have the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta Galaxy. And there are actually two copies of each type of voyage card because over the course of the game, our goal is to try to voyage to all eight of these cards. To do that, we're going to have to discard certain combinations of cards from our observatory, which consists of these eight different decks of cards. And as you can see, the four decks in the top row contain the four different galaxies in our universe, but the four decks in the bottom row represent the four different types of cards that we're trying to collect. We have the ship, nebula, stars, and planet deck, and each deck has eight cards. The way that the decks work is you actually know what's in all of the decks. All of the cards follow the same sort of anatomy. They all have a specific uh, galaxy that they belong to in the top right-hand corner, as well as a specific type at the top left-hand corner. Now, all of the cards in the alpha galaxy deck are going to belong to the alpha galaxy. So they all have that alpha symbol in the top right-hand corner. But you're also going to find two of each type of card in this deck. So for the ships, I have two ships that belong to the alpha galaxy. I have two nebulas here. I have two stars, etc. And that's how all of the galaxy decks work. So moving on to, for example, the beta deck, it's going to be uh, the same set of cards, except they all belong to the beta galaxy. And they're also color coded so that you can know at, at, a, at a moment's glance which galaxy they belong to. Now, the decks at the bottom here work a little bit differently, but also very similarly. And this is kind of where I got confused the first time I played the game. For example, the ship deck, if you flip it over, the top left-hand corner symbol is all going to be the same because every single card is a ship card. The only thing that's different are what galaxies uh, they belong to. You'll see two cards of each galaxy in the deck. These two cards are identical because they both uh, belong to the beta galaxy and they are both a ship type. Now, in addition to finding these cards in this deck, you'll also find two of those same types of cards in the beta galaxy deck because there are four uh, of each type of card in the game. You just have to kind of know which decks to find them. See? The only difference is that two of them are in the galaxy deck and two of them are in the ship deck. And that's going to be very important because as we play the game, you're going to have to know where to find certain cards in order to discard them. And the same holds true for all of the decks that are in the bottom row. So for example, if I flip this over, they're all going to belong to the star type but they're all going to have two of each type of galaxy. 
So that's, that's just kind of what you can expect from the different decks in the game. During setup, I'm actually supposed to shuffle them all <laughs> independently. So you don't know exactly when each card is going to come out. And then you reveal the topmost card of each deck to start your actual observatory. Then you're ready to begin the game. And so I apologize in advance if the uh, area here gets a little bit messy. It's sort of the nature of the game, honestly. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, over the course of the game, we are trying to collect all eight of these voyage cards by launching our voyages uh, into space. <laughs> And so the way that we do that is by discarding one of each type of card of the same galaxy. And again, the type is uh, the ship, uh, nebula, star, or planet. Now this is actually a great starting setup because uh, I can't actually do that right off the bat. But let's just say the observatory looked like this. I would be able to take a launch action to discard all four of these cards because they all belong to the beta galaxy. And you can also tell that by the color of the card. And I have one of each type showing. I have the ship, which is this one. I have a nebula, a star, and a galaxy. And so I would be able to discard all of these. So I'm gonna have a discard pile for each deck uh, in the game to claim one of the beta uh, galaxy voyage cards. And now I am one step closer to my end game victory condition, which is collecting all eight of these. Now, as you witnessed earlier, it's not that simple because we're not just magically going to have <laughs> all four types of cards ready to be discarded. And so if say, for example, we're gonna ignore all of the beta, <laughs> the beta uh, galaxy cards right now, but if say, for example, I wanted to claim this card that belongs to the, the Delta galaxy, I only have two of that type, that card type showing. I only have a uh, ship as well as a nebula. I would have to go looking for the other cards that I'm missing. And so that is why it's important for you to know where to find them. So since I am missing a star type of the Delta galaxy, I know I can find one in, in here for sure because all of these cards are going to be uh, star type cards. And I can also find one in here because all of those cards are going to be uh, from the Delta Galaxy. I literally cannot find that card anywhere else. And that is sort of the type of thinking that I'm gonna have to be doing throughout the game. And so on your turn, you can either take a launch action, which is what I did earlier by discarding one of each type of required card of the same galaxy to take that voyage card, or you can take what's called a coordinate action. And this action allows you to discard two cards of the same type. And again, type is the top left-hand corner symbol. So if I wanted to, I could take a coordinate action and discard these two. And doing so would allow you to activate its power. And this is how you, you look for the cards that you need. Now, each type of card has a minor power and a major power. And the difference is that uh, if you discard two identical cards, I could discard both of these to do the major power, which is basically just a stronger version of it. And so let's just go ahead and discuss the different types of powers so that uh, it's not so confusing. The minor ship power, so basically if I were to discard these two cards, will allow me to choose a deck, look for the card that I want, and put it on top of the deck, shuffling the rest of it underneath it, if that makes sense. So if I were to discard these two cards, I could say I really, really wanted a specific uh, beta galaxy card. I could take this one, put it on top, and then shuffle the rest that's underneath it. And if I were to do the major version of this power by basically discarding the two identical cards, I would just be able to do that twice. That's the stronger version of it. Now, whenever you discard a card, you're actually going to discard it into its own discard deck. You're gonna to have to be careful about which cards you discard, uh, keeping track of how many you have left of each type. Now, the nebula power helps with that. So the minor version allows you to choose a card from a discard pile and then shuffle it back into its original deck. And if you do the major version of this, it'll allow you to take two cards from its discard pile and shuffle it back in. That's how you can kind of gain some of your cards back that you've discarded throughout the game if you need them. The stars minor power allows you to choose one of the decks from the observatory and then uh, shuffle it. And then you can basically draw the top two cards from the deck choose which one to put on top and then which one to put at the bottom. So there's still a little bit of luck here, but you still get a choice, a 50-50 choice basically, of what you actually get to use. And the minor power lets you do this twice actually, because the major version of this power lets you do it four times and you can choose different decks each time. Finally, we have the planet minor power. This allows you to take one of the cards from the observatory. Again, that's gonna be one of the uh, topmost cards here and place it into your outpost. That's sort of uh, gonna act like a reserve for you. Thank you. 
Um, when you're taking a launch action that'll allow you to claim one of these cards, you can choose a combination from the observatory plus your outpost. And so the major version of this allows you to choose up to two cards from the observatory to put into your outpost. So you can collect multiple cards in here, but they all have to be from the same galaxy. That is sort of the limiting rule. In addition, you cannot have multiple copies of the exact same card in your outpost. And that's essentially it. I'm basically going to be launching and taking coordinate actions over and over again until I either lose by not being able to do one of those two actions on my turn, or I win if I can collect all eight of these uh, voyages cards. Uh, the one last thing is at the start of the game, I'm going to start with one of these shooting stars and this acts as a wild. I can basically turn this in with three cards to do a launch action. Um, if you want an easier game, the game actually comes with several of these. So you can start with uh, more than one, or if you want to make it more difficult, you can not start with any, but I've chosen to start with one shooting star today. Now, again, as a note, this is just the base game with zero of the expansions mixed in. And so this is going to be a much simpler version of what I think the game is intended to be, but I wanted to just showcase the base game for demonstration purposes. I'll be discussing the expansions at the end of the video because I have played with them. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle everything and then I'll get started with my playthrough. All right, I have reshuffled everything. And so um, <laughs> it is a bit of an easier start than what I had earlier <laughs> during the teach because I do have three of these types face up, but it's not perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and go with it. Now, just looking at it at a glance, we're probably gonna wanna start by trying to launch a, a Delta Voyage because we already have three of the types needed. All we're missing is the Nebula card, um, which we're probably gonna have to look for in this deck. So. For my first action, I am definitely going to be taking a coordinate action. It's just which one is the question. I could discard these two because they are the exact same card to take the major version of the star uh, power, but it's a bit early and I'm too scared to lose too many of these since there's only four of them in the entire observatory uh, decks. So I think I'm actually gonna start by doing the minor version. I'm gonna discard these two cards. They are both uh, the star type, but they belong to different galaxies. So we're only going to do the minor version of this power, which allows us to choose a deck and shuffle it and then basically place one card at the top and one card at the bottom. So I'm definitely gonna do that with this deck because I really want to find the, uh, the Delta, <laughs> Delta Nebula. That's gonna be kind of tough to say. All right. It's been shuffled. Here we go. Two cards. What is this magic? Okay, clearly one's gonna go on top, one's gonna go on the bottom. Uh, and then I can do it again. So I don't know what I'm gonna need next because at the end of this turn, I'm gonna flip these two face up basically. And I really don't know which, uh, which galaxy I'm gonna work towards. I guess it doesn't make sense to shuffle any of the galaxy cards because they're going to come from different galaxies clearly, right? And the object of the game is to match them. So I'm gonna choose this deck. I'm going to uh, shuffle this and we're just gonna go with whatever. There's no, uh, there's no wrong answer here, I guess. So here's the top two cards. Let's see what they are. Okay, so we're definitely not gonna wanna do this now because four of them are going out of the game already. So I'm just gonna choose this one. At least we're going to start the next uh, turn with two of these gamma, gamma cards face up. All right. That is the end of the action, since I did both of the uh, minor power coordinate actions there. You simply end your turn by just flipping over the top card of any decks that need it. Now that that's done, let's take a launch action because we can. So we have four of the different types needed of all uh, Delta galaxies. We're going to take a launch action and we're launching into space into the Delta galaxy. We have taken, or we have earned <laughs> our first voyage card. Yay. One down, seven more to go. And we also need to remember that we have that. I'm actually just gonna put this down here because the outpost card is supposed to go there. So, all right, let's go ahead and flip this these over and hopefully we can, we can mosey into something. Oh, there we go, that's nice. We can mosey into something that we need. See, the decks are already getting messy. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. We cannot take a launch action, but we are one away from being able to launch into the Gamma Galaxy. We just need the ship version of that Galaxy card. To be clear, I could discard these now and spend the Shooting Star and take it immediately, but I don't really feel like there's any urgency to use this. 
So let's take a coordinate action. And it's honestly a bit of a bummer because if I don't want to disturb any of these cards, um, the only cards that I can truly discard to take a coordinate action are these two. And the planet minor power um, allows me to save a card into my outpost. So I guess I'll just do it, right? I don't really have much choice. Um, I have to probably save one of these three because I'd like to launch to that galaxy next. But I guess I could also save this card because this is the deck that I'm going to want to uh, scavenge through to find the fourth uh, type of card for this galaxy. And I also have this face up. So saving, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to save this into my outpost because at least that way I can just try to keep this here <laughs> for as long as possible to use these two towards this, this voyage. So that's it. It was a minor power. So I was only allowed to do it once. All right. Let's go ahead and flip these over and see what we have. I was really, really hoping that this was going to be a Gamma uh, ship card, but I guess we can't get too lucky, right? Okay. So I fear this is starting to get confusing. So I'm going to pull the discard uh, decks just a little bit down. So it might be a little bit cut off, but at least that way you can kind of see where the observatory is. So I don't really know what the ideal move here is. Uh, I don't think anything is too great. I'm so scared of, of discarding any of these because I'm so close. So I think I'm just going to take uh, the major coordinate power that goes along with uh, the Nebula deck, which is choosing two cards from one deck and then shuffling it back into its regular deck. I have discarded two of the exact same cards, so I am a bit scared of losing too many of the beta galaxy cards. So I will choose... Let's go with these two just because I like the star power better and I don't want to have too many of the exact same card out. So I'm taking these two back and shuffling them back into the beta deck. All right, there we go. So that ends that turn. Let's go ahead and flip these over. Um, now what do we have? Okay, this is fantastic. We have two of the star, the star types. So let's take a coordinate action, discard these two, and that'll let us do the thing where we take a deck and shuffle it and then draw two. So I am looking for the gamma ship, gamma ship card. So let's go ahead and shuffle this, take these two, and I'm gonna do this twice, which means if I, if I fail, I can do it again. But we did not fail, we were successful. So I'll put that on top and put that at the bottom. Now, if I were to do it again, oh shoot, I just realized I discarded the card from this. <laughs> Ah, now what am I going to do? Actually, wait, no, it doesn't matter because this, this deck is always going to have alpha cards. <laughs> so regardless, when this card flips over, it's going to be from the same galaxy as this. Um, I want to find another one of these. So I'm probably going to want to shuffle this deck because there's no use in shuffling that one. It's not going to have any alpha galaxy cards in it. Okay, but here's to hoping we can find one. Aha, they're the same. So... We'll put that one face up, that one face down, and that is it for that turn. Let's go ahead and flip these over. Now we can take a launch action because we have all four types from the Gamma Galaxy. Let's discard them and spend some time in the, uh, the Gamma Galaxy. I have no idea what it's like over there or if any of the people are friendly, but <laughs> we're going. All right, so we have two, two down. What is that? A quarter of the way, we're a quarter of the way through. Let's go ahead and flip these over. And hopefully we can find more, aha, more alpha cards. I think we actually have what we need to voyage to the alpha galaxy. So let's take another launch action and discard these three cards. We have the planet, the nebula, star, and then the ship that is in our outpost. So we're using this. The outpost came uh, in very handy. And this gets discarded to the alpha deck because... Oh, actually, wait. No, it's not necessarily true. It's a ship deck. <laughs> That's a deck that it uh, belongs to. And we have launched our third voyage. So let's collect the alpha card. All right. We are doing pretty well here. So let's go ahead and flip these over and see what we have. Okay, so we do have four cards from the, the Gamma Galaxy, but unfortunately we cannot do a launch action because they are not all four types. These two are exactly the same. 
we are missing the star version. So we're gonna have to go uh, scavenging into this deck somehow. So let's take a coordinate action and let's just discard these two star cards. So we're gonna take a, a minor star power. So again, we're gonna choose a deck. Oh, this one's kind of running thin. What do we need? We need the star, right? The star of this. So let's choose this deck, shuffle it. Oh, is it already out? Oh no, we have one more, okay. Let's shuffle it and see our odds are pretty, pretty good because there's only four cards left here. So, all right, that was bad. <laughs> um, I guess I'll put this one on top, this at the bottom. Doesn't matter because the minor power lets me do it again. So I'll just choose the same deck. I'm assuming you can do this, by the way. The, the, the rule book says you may choose different, uh, different decks and I'm, I'm gonna choose not to do that because we're looking for something. So here we go. Two cards, aha, we found it. Okay, so that goes at the bottom, this goes on top, and that is the end of that turn, so let's flip this over. Of course, it is time to launch to our final Gamma Voyage, which is great, because that means for the rest of the game, we can ignore these cards and just use them for their uh, coordinate power activities. We're taking a launch action, we have the ship, the, oh, okay, let's do the star, um, and the, uh, planet. We have two options for the nebula and this actually matters because it's going to determine which deck you unveil the next card from. Because we're taking the last voyage card of this galaxy, we're, we're not really going to care too much about the the gamma deck. This is just going to be for taking coordinate actions. So let's discard from here so that we can reveal a new, uh, a new ne nebula card. So there you go. We've launched, taken this card, and now we have, uh, we're halfway through. We've got four of the cards uh, needed. How many, which one do we, oh, we haven't, we haven't done a beta, a beta galaxy yet. Okay, on our way, let's flip this over. Ooh, this is looking nice, nice and orange. Do we have, we have each type. Okay, so we can just go ahead and launch right away. So we have the planet, the nebula, star, and, oh no, this is the planet, sorry, the ship. <laughs> You know when you're, uh, you know those games where you have to say the thing that you're you're playing. That's how that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, so we've launched a uh, an orange galaxy. We're gonna go with colors, an orange galaxy card. So we're gonna take the voyage, and that's that. That was kind of handed to us, honestly, but we'll take it. So there we go. So now we're only gonna be focusing on the alpha and beta galaxies. We are pretty close to an alpha galaxy, we're just missing the star, the star card in the set. This is sort of the time when taking the nebula powers is helpful because we're getting to the bottom of the decks and shuffling a discarded card back into the deck is gonna be a lot easier to find, right? So let me just see what's in this discard. Do I have, oh, both of them are out. So I'm not gonna find a star from the alpha deck. So it could be in my, it, Maybe it'd be in my best interest to put that back in here. The power that would be most ideal, honestly, would be the ship power. But for some reason, we haven't really been doing that or haven't had the opportunity to take that uh, coordinate action. So then let's do it. Let's, uh, let's take a nebula minor power. So I'm gonna discard these two and that will let me choose a card from a discard pile and then shuffle it back in. Now, what did we say we needed? Oh, the star, right? The star of the alpha uh, type. <laughs> the alpha flavor. So I've found it. I'm gonna shuffle this back in here and hopefully we can pull it out of three cards. <laughs> our odds are in our favor, but okay, here we go. Not it. Okay, that was too good to be true, right? Anyway, that is the end. That's all we could do with that, uh, that coordinate action. So the thing that's nice is we have these two exact cards out here and this is definitely gonna get us what we need. So we're taking a coordinate action to discard these two. We're doing the major star power, which um, again, lets us draw the top two cards. There are only two cards in this deck, so I'm not gonna shuffle it, I'm just gonna draw them. And one we get to put on top, the other one will be at the bottom. Clearly, this is the way to go. So there's that. And then now we're into our next turn, we can launch. So one of each type of alpha, Galaxy card, let's go ahead and discard them. One, two, three, and four. And that will gain us our final alpha galaxy. I have no idea what is going on in the beta galaxy for us to not want to visit it. I don't know if there's a smell <laughs> or if the, the people there are not so kind, but either way, it, we cannot wait too long. It's time for us to go. 
Let's flip these over. But the good thing is that is the only deck that we care about. And that's going to be all in this deck, truly. So um, we're, we're definitely going to win this, I think. We have three of them showing now. We just need the beta card from the planet deck. So let's just make sure, is it not? We haven't discarded any at all. Hmm. Well, fortunately, we do have some ship cards. Uh, so we can finally take this power. This is the best power in the game because you discard these two. We're taking a minor uh, ship power and that will let us look for the card we want and put it on top. I've been wanting to do this. I've been wanting to do this all game. So what, do, what card do we need? We need the, we have the star, uh, nebula, ship. We need, oh yeah, it's the planet deck. What am I doing? <laughs> the rest of the cards get shuffled underneath it. And there you go. Now, had that been the major version of that power, I'd be able to do it twice, but because it was a minor one, just the one time. Okay, so let's launch then. Let's discard the ship. I'm gonna do the star and the planet because we have two options here. I think I'm gonna go with this one so that we can reveal a, uh, a new card in in the beta deck, although I'm, I'm not so sure that truly mattered. But anyway, we've collected uh, the Voyage card, and we have one last one to go. There are no more cards in this deck, and we do need a star. We do need this. So it would be in our best interest to take the coordinate power that lets us dive into the discard deck, which is this one, the Nebula type. So let's go ahead and take a coordinate action to take a minor Nebula power. So discarding those two, and then now you can take any card from any one discard pile and shuffle it back. <laughs> Shuffling that back in there. Um, and that's that. We are going to win, y'all. We're almost done. All right, let's do it. Let's do our final launch. We have a ship, a nebula, star, and planet. We have launched our final voyage. That is it. We've gone to eight different galaxies. We're very productive today. Congratulations. That is it. That is Stellarion. We've won. We've won the base game. <laughs> We've won the simplest version of this game that exists. And uh, it is a lot easier when, when you don't play with the expansions. But either way, congratulations. We did it. So if you are curious about the different expansions that the game comes with, there are actually four different expansions, or I guess you can call them modules, and you can mix and match them, or you can just play all of them at once, which is what I did when I played uh, the expansions. I'm not really a module expansion type person, so whenever um, I get a game in that has a, a, like a several expansions in one, I typically will play it like this. I, I won't play with any of them. So by the way, we never use our shooting star. <laughs> we could have done that ages ago. Anywho, the first expansion is the Black Hole expansion, and this adds Black Hole cards to the different uh, decks in the game. This makes the game um, harder because in addition to the Black Hole cards, you also have to add more uh, Voyage cards. The game comes with eight more of these advanced Voyage cards, and you choose five of them to mix in. And so you have to now do uh, 13 Voyages, I guess, because you still have the, you still have the original eight. And so as you play the game, these black hole cards are going to pop up in their assigned decks. And obviously you cannot discard via a normal launch action to, to do this. If you have this face up, it blocks the way basically. And so when playing with this expansion, you actually have a third type of action now. You can discard any four uh, black hole cards to take any three voyage cards. So it makes it harder, but it also kind of gives you a rush of points, I guess. But there are a lot of these black hole cards and they're gonna be all over the place. The next expansion introduces uh, theories and breakthroughs. So these are quite simple. Uh, the, break the breakthrough tiles actually augment one of the types of coordinate powers. And so you only play with one of these uh, each game you play. So as an example, the planet breakthrough token allows you to have several cards in your outpost that belong to different galaxies. So they basically change the way that the powers work to make it a bit easier. Uh, although the theory tokens make the game a little bit harder because these four are going to be stacked at the start of the game. And they always show a combination of three different types of cards that you need to find. And so you just need to have this combination of cards in your observatory face up. And as soon as you do, you can discard one and it reveals the next one. And you basically have to get through this entire four uh, tile stack before the end of the game in order to win. If you don't get through these, you lose. The third expansion introduces these eight mirror cards that you shuffle into the deck just like the black hole cards that uh, I was showcasing earlier. With this expansion, you actually play the voyage cards differently. You have to stack them in two uh, columns 
sort of something like this. And then now you have to kind of claim them in a specific order. So if it looked like this, I could only launch these two cards, the two cards that are at the bottom first. I would not be able to launch this card because it's it's being covered by the rest of the column. And so this makes the game harder because you can't just, you know, willy-nilly take whichever voyage card uh, is available to you. I actually like playing with this expansion because I think it's kind of a, a fun puzzle. Um, in addition, these mirror cards, whenever they pop up, you can discard it along with a different card in the observatory to take a minor um, a minor power. Basically, to take a coordinate action, it mirrors whatever card you're discarding. So if I were to discard a mirror card and this ship card, it acts like a ship card from a different galaxy. So I'd be able to take a minor ship power, if that makes sense. And so there are a bunch of these. You shuffle them into all of the decks in the game. The last expansion is called the Glaucus Sun. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Gla Glaucus? Yeah, I think Glaucus. <laughs> it introduces this board. And so uh, this makes the game significantly more difficult because you have this token and each time you take an action, this token is going to move forward along the track. It's going to move a different number of spaces depending on the type of action that you took. Whenever you launch, basically taking one of the voyage cards then it moves it uh, four spaces forward. If you take a major power, it moves it two spaces and a minor power is just one. But if this token gets all the way to the very end of the track before you win the game, then you lose. So that's bad. But the good news is there are ways for you to move the token backwards. And so if you take a coordinate action and you actually forfeit the power, if I discarded two cards in the observatory to take a major power, for example, and I just didn't apply its effect at all, then I can move the token up to eight spaces backwards, which is great because not only does it give me more time, but if I were to move it backwards into one of these meteor spaces, I collect a meteor token, which I don't have here. And during the game, you can discard two meteor tokens to just claim a voyage card. So it's difficult, but also uh, not, it gives you some tools in your tool belt to succeed. Um, it does make the game a lot more strategic though. So this is definitely uh, something to consider when you've played the base game by itself. And there you go, that's essentially it. Those are all the different types of expansions that come in the game. Again, you don't have to play with any of them if you don't want to, or you can just throw all of them in if you'd like. Uh, there's also several more shooting stars that come with the game to make the game a little bit easier. Um, now I have played with all the expansions at once because uh, I figured if I was gonna do one of them, I might as well read through them all and throw them all in and it was, um, it was a little bit wild. <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend doing the all-in method. It does get significantly more difficult and a lot more is not under your control. Um, it does make the game feel more strategic, like you're really trying to work something out because if you watch the playthrough, this game kind of went really smoothly for us. Uh, we didn't run into too many issues. We pretty much just powered through all the way to the end. It's definitely not that simple when you're playing with the expansions, especially the uh, the Glaucus Sun thing with the board. Uh, it does make it a lot more difficult. But otherwise, I think the game in general is, it's very it's a very neat concept. Um, it's, it's basically card matching. You're basically card matching the entire time, but what you do with it and the amount of knowledge that you have uh, to formulate an actual strategy because of how the decks are set up is really clever. Now, I'm not the biggest fan necessarily of this sort of card play. It's a lot to keep track of and the table gets really messy. So because of that, it's not really a game that I gravitate towards constantly. I definitely played this because I wanted to explore the rest of the games that are in this series because I'm actually a big fan of the original game. Um, Oniram is a game that came out several years ago and this was really popular in the, I think the solo gaming community when it first came out. Um, the app kind of makes the actual physical copy of the game a lot less, like I don't really necessarily want to play the physical copy of the game because the app is just so good. Uh, but this game is really good. I actually did a playthrough of this um, for our Patreon community. So that video is still there. If you're a part of it or if you'd like to see it, there's always a link in the description below. But this game is really neat because it's so simple, but it's also really hard. You're collecting doors and keys. And it was also the first sort of insight into this art style that we had in the board gaming community. And some people are probably gonna dislike the art style, but I actually like it 
quite a lot. It's very colorful. It's almost uh, childlike um, and very dreamy. It's a very dreamy, dreamy world, I guess. And all of the games in this universe have this art style. I actually have all the games in the collection, like I was mentioning earlier, but I haven't played them all. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but uh, they're not only solo games. A lot of them have a two player variant to them, but it definitely feels like they're intended as a solo game that they sort of made rules. So if you want to play it at two, you can. So with that being said, I have not played Stellarion at two players. I've only played it solo. For me, I found it to be enjoyable, but not super riveting. So somewhere in the middle. Um, like I said, if it didn't get super messy, then I would probably want to play it more often. But because of the, the card aspect, to it. It's not one that's quite high on my list. Um, it does make me excited though to try the different games in the series. If you've played any of the other games in the universe, let me know what which ones you enjoy. Um, the ones that I have are this one, it's Nautilian, Nautilian, Sylveon. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce I'm pronouncing them like they're Pokemon. Sylveon, Castellian, and Arion. These are the ones that we have. I, I might be missing one, but I just love this art style. So I'm really interested in seeing how they all play. From what I understand, they're not all card games like this. I know Stellarion was and so is Onirum, but I don't think all of them are. But either way, I'm really looking forward to exploring these. So there you go, that is Stellarion. I haven't forgotten about solo gaming. This is something I definitely intend on continuing whenever I have a moment. Um, for anybody who is awaiting the Uwe Rosenberg wrap up, I deeply apologize. Uh, it's gonna be up to when Naveen has time, despite, you know, he, he works a full-time job, so it's a little bit more difficult uh, when we have to film together, but we will be filming that soon. And otherwise, thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.